everyone, and welcome to another midweek video message update again. And as always, I am praying for your safety, your health, and your wellness. For our midweek video message this week, I want to have a conversation about milk. You heard me correctly, milk. 25 years ago, the California Milk Processing Board hired an advertising firm in San Francisco asking them to come up with a campaign that would increase milk sales. The San Francisco-based firm came up with the famous Got Milk campaign that we are familiar with. If you want some good entertainment, go to YouTube and Google or, or search rather in the YouTube in the YouTube search. Top 10 Got Milk commercials. Great humor, great content. Enjoy that. Now, the reason I want to have a quick conversation about milk is because I noticed an online story this week that scientists have discovered that ants produce milk for each other. What an amazing discovery. Ants produce milk. We know that about mammals but we didn't know that about ants and that caused me to think about to begin to think about milk theologically a little bit and began to realize how much milk has changed you know over the time it's gone from in, at least in in the in the supermarket right whole milk to skim milk or, or 2% milk or 1% milk a lesser fat milk because we thought for the longest time that fat was the problem in milk and so we added sugar instead to our low fat milk and then along came our fascination recently with almond milk and now oat milk and there was goat's milk in there and I don't know if any of you have ever tried pea milk I haven't had the courage to try pea milk yet and there's probably some other milks out there but it's just fascinating to me that how, how much milk has changed just in my lifetime. But then this ant news item reminds me that milk hasn't changed at all, that even ants now, scientists have discovered, share milk with each other because milk is that life-giving, foundational, formulaic substance that sustains and helps all of life flourish. And the reality is that all of us began our lives similarly, similarly with our mother's milk. And so it should really be no surprising that while on one hand, milk has changed a lot, milk really hasn't changed at all. The psalmist in number 65 reminds us, and I quote, O God, you are my God. I seek you, my soul thirsts for you, my flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory, because your steadfast love is better than life. My lips will praise you, so I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call on your name. My soul is satisfied as with a rich feast of fat milk. Friends and neighbors in Christ, as our holiday season zaps us, milks us, really, of our constitution, of our life, wearing us out, running us ragged, let us be reminded that during this season of Advent, that God is coming to us and nourishing us, feeding us the fatness of God's grace in the promise of Jesus' return to save the world, to bring all of creation back into its right place with God. As you are hungry, as your soul thirsts, as you desire to be at peace, as you desire to know contentment, as you desire to just be involved and, and secure 
in this world be reminded that that life giving initial feeding is the milk of God's word that is Christ Jesus crucified, resurrected, and promised to come again. Feast on God's fatness for you.